something that you can, um, like what are some of the things that, that students should be thinking about? Sure, sure. Yes, so I joined the team at Babson after five years working at Holy Cross and having gone to a liberal arts school as well. So when I started my position at Babson, I was really not sure either about how that transition was gonna go for me personally and for what we were really going to be looking for in students. I would say the, the one big thing that I learned very early on, and it was also a little uncomfortable when we'd have students come in at the junior, senior year and have to talk about the importance of the math curriculum and number one, having pre-calculus. That was basically a prerequisite for students applying to Babson and is true along most business programs, higher level math, right? It's just something that is expected. And sometimes students and families didn't know that. So that was always a, a difficult conversation to have because at that point in high school, there wasn't much more that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, really, the, the types of students were similar and different in, in, in you know, lots of different ways. I think the students that were applying to Babson had really self-selected that business is what they wanted because that's all that we that we did there, right? So mm -hmm. they already knew that business is what they wanted. They knew that they had those some of the skills, those softer skills that were going to make them successful. So they had the math mm -hmm. or didn't, and we had to tell them that. And then they had some of those um, softer skills like creativity. I was really surprised when I started at Babson, just how creative these, we tend to, I think, think that business-minded people and folks mm -hmm. are more sort of math science, but the students are really creative and thoughtful. Problem solving was a big thing that we were looking for, ability to see and identify problems and figure out ways to solve them. Leadership, which I know you and I want to talk a little bit more about, but that was certainly something that we that we looked for, but in different ways, I think, than families sometimes think about. Um, the ability to work as a team and collaborate was huge, especially at Babson, because the first year curriculum was revolved around working as a team. So those are mm -hmm. some of the things that we were looking for with students. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's take a deeper dive into like a number of those because those are all really important and I want to make sure people understand them. So math is more important than the business electives that high schools offer. I think it's really important to note that. And can you dig into a little bit more about why that is? So I definitely saw a number of applications where it was clear the student was interested in business based on all of the electives that that student had taken. However, they had taken those electives at the expense of those more academic courses that we talk about on this show all of the time, right? The mm -hmm. math, science, history, English, world language, those even at a school that is looking for students interested in business are the, the most important with math kind of mm -hmm. coming up as the top one. Just like with other majors, using those electives, if your high school offers them an intro to accounting, a marketing class, right, a personal finance, those are great ways to show that interest in business and get acquainted with what you might be studying, but not at the expense of perhaps an AP US history, right? Mm -hmm. Or a physics class. You wanna make sure that your academics, those solid academics are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always figured too, like with computer science, engineering, those kinds of things, like the students go into who go into business are not gonna stumble when it comes to the fun parts, right? If right. they've been taking those classes, but it's with the math class that they might stumble. So you need to know that they can do that kind of work. Exactly. Most first year college college courses in the business colleges will be based on something in calculus. So mm -hmm. having that pre-calc background really was that prerequisite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll either be calculus itself or some sort of business math, including calculus. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So let's highlight that first and foremost, math is really important. So, mm -hmm. um, and so what about, let's talk then about the leadership piece of this. Cause I think that that one's, you know, everybody thinks being a leader is being captain of a team or, um, you know, a school class president or um, whatever. And those things are good things, but that's not the only kind of leadership out there. Exactly. And we talk about that a lot with, with families and we were really looking a little bit deeper, right? At, at students and their activities, of course, leadership positions, 
we all were in high school. We know sometimes <laughs> it's not necessarily the one with the most skills, but maybe a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. My boys still make fun of the fact that I was not captain of the cheerleading team in high school. Um, <laughs> Even though that's hard for me to admit, I was not <laughs> elected captain, um, nor was I president of student council. But there are certain leadership qualities and certain ways that students can show leadership potential in different ways. So we always think about students who have started a club that you know, I have an example of a student that I read an application years ago. The high school did not have a girls golf team. The girls had to play on the boys team and this girl realized that this was an issue wanted to start a team and went through all of the channels that needed to happen to make that happen so she needed to find students that were interested she needed to petition the school she needed to find an advisor and there were all of those steps that showed all of those different leadership qualities she wasn't necessarily she didn't necessarily have a title right but there was she was a founder i guess mm -hmm. so that particular organization. Um, a student, again, another applicant that I remember who realized after cleaning out his garage that the garage was full of old sports equipment, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody was using it and figured out a way to get all of his friends and family together to clean out their garages and started an actual nonprofit mm -hmm. that donated used sports equipment to students and, and children that needed those in other areas. So those types of things are also ways to show leadership, leadership in the classroom. Mm -hmm. In a recommendation where a teacher says, I notice when this student isn't here in the class, right? This student is not afraid to ask the questions that other students might be afraid to, or I lean on this student to help the other students that are struggling. So there are some of those qualities that, again, don't often come with a title, but that can be looked at and, and you can sort of extract out of an application. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, I mean, like I talked to, you know, when I, when, when I was a high school counselor, I would sometimes talk to coaches about students and they would say, you know, he's, he's not the captain because, you know, typically we choose the best player, which is a separate issue, but um, they're like, but he's the one who does the mentoring of the ninth graders who come in. And I think like, that's leadership. I mean, that right. like, boy, like, like, mentors them sees if they're struggling like when I when I would read a comment like that I mean I wasn't reading for business but everybody likes leadership at some level and that really impressed me because it was mm -hmm. also it leavened with like real compassion you know you knew that this was going to be someone who would work so well in a team right absolutely yeah and that seems to matter that probably mattered more at Babson than most places because you said the first year was all about projects all about project work. So even a leader in a class project, right? I mean, even that, that that's the person that can get everybody to work well together or can sort of cohesively get everyone's ideas onto one page, right? So think and those would come up, maybe not in a listing of activities, but in a recommendation or in an essay. Um, those are things that we'd be looking a little bit deeper for. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important to note these things because I do I talk to a lot of parents who say well my kids an introvert they're not going to be elected student body president and I'm like well they can accomplish things. Or like let's say a student has some kind of a different interest like I had a student who was really interested in music so he organized a battle of the bands, he never had a formal leadership position in high school and his, you know, his whole time there but he organized a battle of the bands reached out to bands at other high schools and ended up organizing this huge event at, at Chadwick where I worked. It was great. Right. Absolutely. And or theater students who are thinking, because I'm not the lead, I am not a leader in theater, right? And mm -hmm. I'm always talking about the students that are on the, the set crew or the lighting crew, right? There are people that are making things happen behind the scenes. And that's another thing that you bring up too. I, I would hear a lot at Babson students that were thinking about it or parents that were concerned that their student was an introvert and that this was you know, a school only of extroverts. And there, there has to be some sort of give and take to that, right? Somebody mm -hmm. has to be willing to sort of do the work and let so, you know, somebody else take the leadership roles. So um, there's certainly students that may think that they're in the background, but without them, things would not happen. And really mm -hmm. in, like allowing students to think about, okay, you might not be the one out there front and center, but the work that you're doing is making something happen. And, and how do you kind of talk about that in an application? 
So this brings up another issue too, in terms of extracurriculars. I mean, I generally speaking do recommend that students join things like Future Business Leaders of America, partially for exposure, but is it still valuable if a student does theater or does things that are unrelated to business? Especially bringing up theater because my father-in-law is the theater director at a local high school and he always says theater skills are skills for life, right? Mm -hmm. So everything from public speaking, being able to go with the flow, right? When things don't happen, like today, Sally, with you and me on the yeah. <laughs> Yes, right? right. Things didn't go quite how we planned it. We had to figure out other ways to make it work. Like those mm -hmm. are skills, life skills, but yes, business skills as well. So um, absolutely encouraging students. There's only so many leadership roles to go around in high school. Again, mm -hmm. we've all been there. There's only like what two captains of every team and mm -hmm. student council. There's only so much to go around. But I think students really sell themselves short. They don't think about those qualities that without even without the title they bring. Mm -hmm, mm hmm And so what about um like who who are business majors? Like who because I mean we, you and I checked in before this discussion and I think that often students who want to major in business, it's it's really they're just kind of jumping ahead to their career. They're not thinking about like what the actual major means. They're just like, I want to make money, which fair enough. I want to make money too. Um, you know, <laughs> like they want to have a good, you know, they want to have a good life. They want to have some money to spend. Like they don't want to threat. Fair enough. That's a good goal. But it's about more than that. So let's kind of dig into that. So I was on a, a number of different websites for different schools as we were thinking about this particular segment. And you will see the same types of words pop up about the types of programs and the types of students that they're looking for. So yes, there are the students that are thinking, hey, look, I'm good with numbers, business makes sense, right? There are also the students, like you said, who think I really wanna be successful in life, whatever that means, and thinks that business might be the way. But words pop up a lot as you look at business schools, like innovation, creativity, problem solving, identifying problems and figuring out ways to, pro to problem solve, teamwork, um, ingenuity, right? I mean, though entrepreneurship, right? Which was Babson. So it's not just those numbers type students. It's students who look at the world in different ways. Again, identify problems or issues or something that's missing and want to figure out how do we make that happen? What I loved about Babson in particular, but I think business can give students the skills to do this is that many students came in saying, I don't really know exactly what I want to do, but I know to bring up there, I know I love theater and I'm not going to be an actress, but maybe one day I'll run a theater, right? Maybe one day I'll, I'll work for Ticketmaster, right? I mean, the students are able to figure out how can I work in the business of what I love? If I'm not going to be sort of a, a star in, on Broadway or you know a, a, a music uh, recorder. You know what can I do that's going to kind of make me part of it? And business is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is so important too. So now I'm kind of thinking about it with my brain, like. Like um, I was sort of the opposite where I thought like, I'm on a mission to help people and you know, business isn't part of that. And like uh, any theater that runs is a not-for-profit. I mean, those things are on razor slit, like just the narrowest of margins. And I think that one of the things I didn't realize and that a lot of people don't realize is how helpful like a business education can be for someone who is interested in working in a not-for-profit, for example. Absolutely. Absolutely. We talked about that all the time at Babson, particularly. Mm -hmm. I remember specifically, we had a, a sheet that kind of showed where all of our students went after six months after graduation. And, you know, some parents would be surprised that we didn't have 75% of our students, you know, entrepreneurs, right? Or that mm -hmm. students' sal certain salaries weren't, you know, much higher than they are. And we did have a program for nonprofit, right? For, for management of nonprofits. And mm -hmm. students weren't coming out with tons of money, right? Mm -hmm. So that's definitely um, something to think about. And Babson did talk a lot about, we want to educate you to go out and do good, right? For mm -hmm. the people, for the planet. That was a big piece of, you know, certainly product and you know, to actually make a profit. But people and planet were part of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I think that's really wonderful. And, and Babson isn't the only business school. Like no. I was looking at Notre Dame's website and they are all about like the Jesuit values. Absolutely. And, you know, how are you, how is this going to better, um, you know, the lives of people, those right. around you? Right. I, thought well, was I was looking really at wonderful. Miami. They were talking a lot about global, right, and international business. Um, there's, you're going to find a lot of personalities at different schools as well, based mm -hmm. on what some of their interests are, sometimes based on their location, but you'll find some of that philosophy and, and personality in lots of different schools. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to highlight that I forgot. Um, we talked about extracurriculars, but we didn't talk about part-time jobs. And I think those are really useful, right? How did we miss that? We talked a lot about that. Yeah. I think that personally, I think that can be one of the best ways to show your interest in business. And my favorite student, I talked to you about this, worked as a dishwasher at a very, very busy restaurant in the summer. And he used that experience so much in his applications, just about what he learned about business, what he learned from the owner, what he learned in the kitchen, observing everything from the wait staff to the sous chef, to food waste, there was a lot that he was able to talk about mm -hmm. just from that position, um, working at your grocery store, all of those cute little store downtown, whatever it might be, camp counselor. Those are all great, great ways to kind of get your feet wet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And learn about different kinds of places and the different kinds of people that you might have to work with. So right. absolutely. All right. Well, I think that that wraps it up. Thank you so much, Kimberly. It was nice to talk to you, Sally. Nice to talk to you. All right. And thanks so much to Shannon for joining me. Um, everybody get ready for our show next week because it is going to be a great one. Beth Heaton will be in interviewing Jeffrey Salengo. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He's the author of Who Gets In and Why. Uh, you might remember that Ian Fisher, Shannon, and I discussed it um, in the January 28th episode. We thought it was a great book. Everybody should read it. You should read it, Kimberly. <laughs> so, um, And then come back and listen to us talking about it too. Um, also, I want to let everybody know that we're running a contest anytime before May 4th. Um, please review us um, on Apple Podcast. And if you do, you will be automatically entered in a raffle for two hours of free counseling, college counseling with Beth Heaton. The winner is going to be announced on our May 13th episode. All right. And finally, I want to remind you that you don't have to listen to our shows live. Every show is accessible 24 seven on the Voice America website. You can download every show on iTunes. And if you want to search for a particular show topic, you can go to our blog, blog page at blog.getintocollege.com. That's blog.getintocollege.com. And last, don't forget, we're here every Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. <laughs>